Perdomo Arigato, Mr. Roboto. Anyone? Anyone? Today, I'm putting $5,000 of my money in it, and I'm giving these three totally strange strangers a chance to win it all away from me if they're smart enough, quick enough, and lucky enough. Now, let's turn to the boss, to my skags, Jimmy Kimmel, and find out who these people are. Thank you, Benjamin. Uh, contestant number one is Doug Trezair, and Doug is a strategic planning manager who went to a friend's wedding last spring wearing only his underwear, a crown, and an emperor's robe. Why did you do this, Doug? Well, it was a fairy tale wedding. Uh, my friend Paula, the bride, <laughs> dressed as the princess bride, and Brad, the groom, dressed as Prince Charming, and we were invited to come as our favorite fairy tale character. And so... you were King Underpants? No, the... <laughs> I wore the emperor's new clothes. Oh, I see. All right. And contestant number two is Catherine Tom. Catherine is a freelance editor who once stuffed envelopes for Engelbert Humperdinck. That's right. You know, he's the number one fan. You know, he stuffs more than envelopes. Did you help him out with that? Uh, uh, I'm not uh, at liberty to disclose that I'll take that as a yes. Contestant number three is Thad Davis, and Thad is getting a graduate degree at USC in the playwriting program. That's right. And what do you want to do when you get out? Write a play. Makes sense. You're Makes only going to write one play? I figure I'll write one good play. That's a lot more than most people write. Contestants, good luck. You're going to need it. Now, everyone, please turn your attention to our game board as Jimmy tells us our first five topics. And they are. <clears throat> gaps bigger than the one between David Letterman's teeth. <laughs> With friends like these, who needs anemones? <laughs> Tummy, can you hear me? What the flack's the matter with you? And dynasties without Joan Collins. All right, contestants, in the first round, questions are worth anywhere from $50 to $150 of my money. Every time you manage to answer a question correctly, you win money, I lose it. There's no penalty for an incorrect answer, except for having to stuff envelopes for M. Goldberg Humperdinck. We're going to start with Doug. Pick a topic. Well, it's almost like something what people have been asking me forever. Just so let's pick a topic. Go with... <laughs> what... What the flax the matter with you? I bet they've been asking you that for a while. Hundred and fifty dollar question. Fibers from the inner bark of the flax plant are used to weave what fabric? Thad. Linen? Yes, Thad, yes. Thad. Well, it's proceeding almost like a play. You got the first question right, and you get first crack at a follow-up for fifty dollars. The seeds of the flax plant are the source of what oil commonly used in paints and printing inks? Linseed oil? Yes, linseed oil. <laughs> Good. All right, our next category is people named O'Connor who actually passed a bar, and uh, <laughs> that has control of the board. Okay, let's uh, go with gaps bigger than the one between David Letterman's teeth. $50 question. Spanish explorer Garcia Lopez de Cardenas was the first European to discover what Arizona wonder. Catherine. The Grand Canyon? Yes. Good deal. Wasn't going to be Arizona State, was it? $50 follow-up. What major river flows through the Grand Canyon? The uh, Colorado? Yes, very good. Did you just say something disparaging about Arizona State? No, it obviously didn't exist in the 16th century. All right. That's all. I like Arizona State. I went a lot. there, you know. Next I, I remember is? dirt bags. I've been to dirt bags. <laughs> That's in Tucson, I think. Next category is uh, Great Moments in Drainage. And uh, <laughs> Catherine. I'm going to go with Dynasties without Joan Collins. Hmm, $100 question. When the Mongol dynasty ended in 1368, what new vase-loving dynasty started? Dad. Ming? Yes, Ming. I wonder if Doug would be more comfortable if we let him compete in his underpants. I think he would. <laughs> okay, $50 follow-up. In 1894, Sun Yat-sen began a move to end what mustache-like dynasty? Catherine or Doug? I'm going to yes. try Han. No, no. Uh, Manchu? Yes, Doug breaks out of the board. 
<laughs> uh, that talk about the underpants got him going. All right, before I lose any more cash to these underpants wearing maniacs, we'll be back to see how much more cash they can, in fact, steal from me right after this. <laughs> With more of Win My, Ben Stein's money. Right now, Thad, the playwright, is in the lead with $300 of my money. Jimmy, what's our new category? Our new category is to Hades in an animated handbasket. Doug, you had the last correct answer, so you get to go first. How about people named O'Connor who actually passed the bar? $50 question. Sandra Day O'Connor was the first woman named to what national post? Thad. The Supreme Court? Yes. Very good. $50 follow-up. $50 follow-up. Who did Bill Clinton successfully nominate to the U.S. Supreme Court to succeed Byron R. White of Colorado? Souter? No. Doug. Ginsburg. Yes, yes. Nice, tight little body on that Ginsburg. You yeah. Know? Very Our muscular. next category is... Huey Lewis and the newspapers, and Doug has control of the board. I think we're going to Hades in an animated handbasket. $150 question. What actor who starred in The Boost, a movie based on a book written by me, Ben Stein, provides the voice of Hades in the 1997 feature Hercules? Doug. Woods. Yes, very good. $50. $50 follow-up. Who is the father of Hercules? Zeus. Yes, very good. All right, our next category is R Crumb Cake. And Doug, you get to pick again. Uh, R Crumb Cake. $100 question. A critically acclaimed 1995 documentary detailed the life of Robert Crumb, an unusual man with what unusual profession? Catherine. He's a peeping Tom? No. <laughs> Doug. Uh, cartoonist. Yes, cartoonist. <laughs> uh, I'd like to find out where that came from. That's an interesting one, Captain. You, I guess you would end the word. Just... <laughs> you know, Captain's okay. last name is Tom, too. Yeah. A $50 question. In the famous cartoon strip, Calvin and Hobbes, what kind of animal is Hobbes? A uh, stuffed tiger. Good enough for me. Looks great. He's a peeping tiger. Our next category is, didn't you know a flood was coming? And we have less than two minutes left in the round. Doug, you pick. Huey Lewis in the newspapers. $150 question. The daily newspaper known as The Bee is published in what West Coast capital? Doug. Sacramento. Yes. No sooner did I suggest going out in his underpants than he can't miss a thing. $50 follow-up. Name the St. Louis Daily newspaper with the largest circulation in Missouri. Uh, the Star. No, sir. Dad. Uh, the Dispatch News. No, sir. The St. Louis Post-Dispatch. You are close. You are close. Very Dad. close. Our next category is tickling your ivory weigh-ins. And dog, you get the truth. Uh, great moments in drainage. $150 question. The Dracula legend is based on what real-life medieval Wallachian prince? Doug. Vlad the Impaler. Yes. <laughs> Look how happy he looks like. He is. Vlad the underpants wearing Impaler. $50 follow-up. What British author wrote the classic novel Dracula? Stoker. Yes. Oh, that is the end of the first round. Doug, you have $800 of wow. Ben's money. Of Ben's money. Catherine, you do not have enough of Ben's money. Catherine, but you do probably have many precious memories of Engelbert that none of us have. That's true. Unfortunately, because you only won $100, you have to leave. And that means that I, well, you don't have to leave, but you have to leave the stage. You can stay here as long as you want. We have to have to take back your $100. Let's see that back. Thank you very much. And when we come back, these two survivors will, in a Dracula-like way, try to suck the blood out of my wallet. And I will defend my money by actually becoming a contestant. Stay tuned. I dare you. Smart Ben really is as we play more of Win Ben.
Frankenstein's money. Welcome back. As this round begins, Doug, the underpants-wearing bandit, has stolen $800 of my money. Dad, who only wants to write one good play, has $350, and I have $3,850 remaining of my original $5,000 stake, which I will once again defend by becoming a common contestant. From this point forward, Ben has no advanced knowledge whatsoever of any of the questions to be asked. Isn't that right, Ben? It is entirely right. And it's also right that questions in this round have heinously risen to the range of $200 to $500 of my money. That's if you get them right. If I get them right, <laughs> my total stays the same. But thankfully, none of my money is taken away. And whoever has the higher score at the end of this round, whether it be Happy Doug or Glad Thad, gets to go on to play against Ben one-on-one -on -one for $5,000. So let's check out our topics. They are things that are shorter than Howard Stern naked, <laughs> Fred Astaire master, <laughs> places named by a sheep with an overbite, your boss is an idiot, so what else is new? <laughs> and sulfatal attraction. And Ben, your money, your show, you get to go for Boy, it. these are tough ones. I'll try it. Your boss is an idiot, so what else is new? For $200, name the satirical law which states that people tend to be promoted until they reach their level of incompetence. Ben. Murphy's Law. No. Not a bad guess, though. Peter Principle. Oh, of course, Peter Principle. That's how I got here. Yeah, me the next too. next category is exhibitionists who live in glass houses. And then you have control of the board again. I'll take exhibitionists who live in glass houses. For $400 of Ben's money built to house London's Great Exhibition of 1851, what cast iron and glass structure was considered one of the first works of modern architecture? Ben. The Crystal Palace. The Crystal Palace is right, yes. <laughs> Nowhere to go to the bathroom in that place. Our next category is, won't well, you come who, home, Bill Bradley? I guess people who wear underpants to parties. Okay, <laughs> True. I'll take, won't you come home, Bill Bradley? And I'd like to invite Doug and Thad to play along with the game, too. They can uh, In 1978, ex-New York Knicks basketball Hall of Famer Bill Bradley was elected Democratic Senator from which state? Doug. New Jersey. Yes, Doug. Our next category is fences that don't operate out of trucks. And Doug has control of the board. Let's go climb that Fred Astaire master. Why could I have guessed you were going to pick that one, Doug? <laughs> Fred Astaire played a con artist in what 1974 Irwin Allen disaster movie? Doug. The Towering Inferno. Yes, absolutely right. I miss those all-star disaster flicks, yes, you know? I do too. Our next category, my uncle was an anteater. And, uh, <laughs> Doug, make of that what you will. Funny you should mention it, my uncle was an anteater. All right, for $200, anteaters can grow over six feet long and are found only on South America and what other continent? That. Africa? No. Doug. North America. Yes, it is North America. <laughs> And now, Fad, I would like to invite you and Ben to participate. We're trying, but well. he's cheated and broken our buzzers. Our next category is Malcolm Excommunicated. <laughs> Doug? Uh, Malcolm Excommunicated, please. All right, for $200 in 1953, Malcolm X became a minister of what black Muslim religion? Fad. Nation of Islam? Yes, that's Very good. right. That was before his conversion to Jews for Jesus. Our next category is, the Crisco Kid was a friend of mine. And uh, we have less than one minute left in this round. Thad, you get to choose. Sulfatal attraction. All right. For $300, what common sulfate mineral is used as a raw material in making plaster of Paris? Doug. Uh, talcum. No. Thad. Gypsum? Gypsum is right, good. yes. Very good. Next category, the union field. And uh, that again. Uh, let's try places named by a sheep with an overbite. For $400 of Ben's money, in what Canadian national park would you find Lake Louise? Ben. Banff. Banff National Park. Very good. Banff is the correct answer. Fat Ben stifled you. Doug has fifteen hundred dollars of Ben Stein's money, and that means goodbye to Fat.
sad. You know something? Great artists thrive on suffering. And this will someday be just a tiny bit of the rich fertilizer that fertilizes your magnum opus. You've been a worthy competitor for your history. And since you're leaving, I get to have this $850 added back to my total. Thank you very much. And when we come back, I'm going to put all $5,000 of my money on the line and go brain to brain with the underpants kid, Doug, in an intellectual street fight. Stay in your seats. We'll be right back. Congratulations, Doug. Now, you are down to just you against just me. So far, you've taken $1,500 away from me, and he's not wearing just underpants, and he's still doing great. That money you've won is yours to keep, $1,500, no matter what happens. We're down to the serious stuff now, trouser kind of stuff. You have a chance to walk out of here with all $5,000 in money. And they'll say, all you have to do is beat me in what we call the best of ten test of knowledge. Could you explain to the group, please, Jimmy, in you a very straightforward way? bet you I can, sweetness. I am going to ask Ben and Doug the same ten questions. Doug, if you can answer more of those than Ben can, his $5,000 will be yours. Ooh. All right? You have the option of going first or second. Which will it be? I want to go second. You want to go Ooh. second? All right. What do you mean? is in the plane wrap isolation booth where he will be locked up and um, yes has his headphones on he cannot hear us ben yes sir what do you make of this doug i hope he's not as smart as he looks all right very well put you have 60 seconds 10 questions are you ready i shall do my best let's begin what american author wrote the sea wolf Ooh, london yes what is the capital of iran a uh, Tehran. Yes. What was the first steel farm implement invented by John Deere? A uh, plow. Yes. Who did President Kennedy appoint in 1961 as the first director of the Peace Corps? Sergeant Shriver. Correct. What U.S. picture magazine began publication in 1937 and stopped in 1971? Uh, life. No. What word refers to a breed of domesticated tailless cat? Uh, ringtail cat. No. What popular herb is sometimes called wild marjoram? I have no idea. Who directed The Seven Samurai? Uh, Kurosawa. Yes. What pyramid-shaped casino and hotel opened in Las Vegas in 1993? Oh, God, I don't know. What is the Italian term for vocal music without instrumental accompaniment? A cappella. That is right. And you got uh, six questions right. The ones you missed were Look Magazine, Mainz, Oregano, and the Luxor is the hotel that you couldn't name. And now... Yes, sir. Doug, show tunes in those headphones? It's uh, Wagner, my favorite. All right. Uh, are you ready? You have uh, 60 seconds? I'm ready. How the, about it? The number you must beat is six. Okay? Okay. Ten questions. Let's begin. What American author wrote The Sea Wolf? Um, uh, Jack London. Yes. What is the capital of Iran? Uh, uh, Tehran. Yes. What was the first steel farm implement invented by John Deere? A uh, tractor. No. Who did President Kennedy appoint in 1961 as the first director of the Peace Corps? Um, Brew Harlan Grootland. No. What U.S. picture magazine began publication in 1937 and stopped in 1971? Life. No. What word refers to a breed of domesticated tailless cat? Uh, Manx. Yes. What popular herb is sometimes called wild marjoram? Oregano. Yes. Who directed The Seven Samurai? Uh, Kurosawa. Yes. What pyramid-shaped casino and hotel opened in Las Vegas in 1993? The, the Luxor. Yes. What is the Italian term for vocal music without instrumental accompaniment? A cappella. Absolutely right. You win. who never finished college, self-taught, take this money and leave, you've done enough damage. See, this proves that it can be done even by people who wear underpants to birthday parties when they're in their 20s. So I challenge all of you out there to write, call, or email to futility.com in the hope, infinitesimal as it might be, that on some planet, on some distant day, you might win Ben Stein's money.
up next, keep it here for Master Cheese Theater's presentation of just one of the guys. Enjoy. Oh, yeah. Hello, John. Well, hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. Are you okay?